I did it. It's in the basement, guys. <laughs> Get buckled up. It's a long story. All right, guys, Arcade Adam here with another video. This is the one you've been waiting for. This is how to cut a Mega Kate in half <laughs> and uh, live to tell about it. So, just thought I'd start with this is what I shot in the morning. This is before. We took it all apart. I wanted to uh, do a quick review of the insides, kind of show you the wiring. The construction's great. Uh, I, I really like it. I think he did a good job with the cable management, and it's all the uh, one by one framing. Um, the duct tape, I don't know if you see it, comes in the frame above the uh, window there. That's my ad. I was just trying to get cables out of the way. I already started cable managing. Obviously, I already took the computer out. Uh, took some other things out, took the control panel off, moved the sound uh, volume dial and duct taped it to the inside so it wouldn't bounce around. I was trying to make it as light as possible for the movers. That's really what the goal was. So here's some still shots I took just to get a sense of scale. I had the bright idea of uh, hanging my LED light from the TV mount uh, release uh, tension uh, wires there. So. I had some light. Uh, next, one of the next mods, the very first mods that's going to happen is be putting a work light permanently installed in this thing, uh, a la Scantron. I think he was the first one to show that off or come up with it. Um, so we'll definitely be doing the same thing. Um, and this is just more pictures of the interior. I, I really like how he's got clamps on the subwoofer. He's got the same L brackets on the computer case. That's the uh, relay he's using. He's got a fused connection on the power. Um, I just really like the the effort and the um, it shows experience. And when you're building these things, it that you know you you have to do some of these small steps uh, to make a nice machine. And it is. That's a very nice machine. I like it a lot. Um, so the first thing I did this morning was uh, just started taking things apart and. I had to start moving the uh, wiring around. So what I had to do was, um, so you can kind of see the framing on the inside. There's a natural line underneath the control panel that I'm going to cut. And so all the wires that run up and down the left and right hand side uh, of the arcade, I've got to get rid of. So first thing I started doing was cutting zip ties and pulling wires back. That's uh, what the first order of business was. So. You'll see me in a second take uh, just the, the few wires and those zip ties. There I am, you know, cutting them out of the way there. And uh, just making it, getting it ready for <laughs> the big surgery. Because, um, guys, you'll see in a second, this is, it's ridiculous what we did to this thing and somehow pulled it off. I am still in shock. Um, I still can't believe we... Uh, got it done and when I say we I should I should uh, explain uh, my dad helped me do this I'm you know I am very much the apprentice he is the grand master the grand wizard and the the greatest of all time at uh, these kinds of projects and DIY in general so I always reach out to him when I have something I think I bit off more than I could chew especially in this case and again you know if you didn't see the first video the reason we're cutting it in half is because it won't fit down my basement steps. There's literally no geometrical way that the movers I hired to come over could get it down there. They needed about eight or 10 inches. Either way, they slice it to get it. Um, I've got a landing on my basement steps to get it turned around. The Mega Kate is just simply that big. And when I did my measurements, um, I actually made a mock Mega Kate out of a piece of cardboard. And of course that worked because it was two dimensional. Um, I wasn't counting on the third dimension there. <laughs> and I, I thought I did. In my head I did. I was like, yeah, this will, you know, two strong guys with uh, furniture straps on their arms will figure this out. No problem. You know, it's what they do for a living. Nope. <laughs> so just pointing out right here, this is where we're going to make our cut on the side panel there. I'm going to extend those uh, cleats. I don't know if you want, you want to call them, but the one by one. Uh, pieces of wood that are glued and screwed to the side there. We're going to fit the saw right between them and cut right through. So I've got to get the headphone jack out of the way. Um, 
Oh, I have something I forgot to do, because when I first opened this thing up, I had trouble with the left and right speaker. I gotta go check and see if just moving this stuff around fix that, or if I have to tackle the, a wiring issue. But, like I said, <clears throat> Extreme Home Arcade's did an excellent job. No complaints. Good wire cable management. Um, zip ties everywhere, you know, so you... There's nothing... There's no, there were no cables in the way as it was delivered to me. I probably should have taken more pictures of it, but uh, now I'm taking measurements of the new one-by-ones I got to create, so I was going to make a 10-inch to extend that piece, and then above it probably an 11-inch piece uh, to extend that to make a sandwich. Just kind of planning out, you know, thinking ahead before you make the cut, like, okay, there's a screw there, you know, am I going to hit that, or should I cut it at an angle, should I cut it straight across, you know, just thinking through these things, because once you do this, there's no going back. And one of my major major concerns was um, how top heavy this thing is. You got the 50 inch TV, and I've got the active marquee option, which is a very heavy uh, display as well. Um, and that's a lot of weight to sit on a base. And there's only, as you can see, 12 12 inches that are going to be mated together to kind of keep it stable. So. I was concerned that this thing being top heavy was going to slide around too much, so the system we came up with uh, had to be secure. And here I'm measuring the width because I thought maybe, well once we cut this thing we may need another horizontal brace, but what you don't see in this camera shot is right above there is a back panel um, brace, if you will, that connects the two sides together. So you re it wasn't really needed. My dad didn't think I needed it. Uh, and I went with that suggestion. And you've also got, of course, the TV bracket itself uh, right above that, too. So it kept it together real nice. There's really no uh, things to note here that's concerning, I guess, is what I should should say. It's Like I said, like I mentioned before, he's got a fuse... On the hot side, there's a standard, um, I forget, I always forget the name of it, but the PC power cable, the three prong, um, so that's the, the female end, and then there's a, a, a male end on the outside of the arcade to plug into the wall. That inline fuse goes to that uh, relay, and the computer is uh, what turns on that power strip, so all the other, you know, the TV and the two other displays and lights and whatever you've got in your arcade comes on with it. Uh, so it's a nice design. Uh, good gauge on the wire that needs to be, you know, because it's 110. And then the smaller stuff below, excuse me, is the the relay input um, for sensing if and when it needs to turn on. So you don't need thick gauge there. It's just a closed connection power. You know, the power switch on the computer just outputs that small amount of voltage and kicks that thing on. There's that connector I was talking about. I know that's like a NEMA 12. Don't quote me. I always forget the actual name of that thing. That's one of those weird mental blocks that I have. Um, but yeah, we need to address this. The one critique I have is that there was sawdust everywhere, so we're going to clean this thing up real quick and uh, bear with me on the shaky cam. <laughs> Okay, and now that that's taken care of, we are... Oh, oh no. I sucked Oops. up one of the screws. <laughs> well, gonna have to go take care of that. Two hours later. Well, we got the screws rescued, so we're good there. But now it's time for the fun part. We wheeled it into the living room, laid her face down, 
and started planning our cuts. We figured face down would be best because it would relieve tension on the saw blade as we go through. So that's the uh, underside view of the Mega Cave. You've never seen it, but we started by throwing a bunch of blue painters tape right where we're gonna make the cut. There's your first cut. Uh, got real lucky. Man, uh, kind of went a little slow in the beginning. You can see there's a little bit of tear out on the artwork there. But wow, did that go together nice. Those are the cleats we installed like I was talking about before. Ended up using uh, some epoxy because I ran out of my wood glue. It was drier than a bone. So flipped her over, did the other side. Oh man, did that come out good. I went a little faster and the artwork did a whole lot better. Look at that. Just perfect. <laughs> man, I just, I can't say that enough that uh, I'm so thankful that my dad was able to come over and help me with this and uh, these were some of the tools that we used to cut the last little bit of the brace and there she is she's in two pieces uh, ready to go and here's the bottom section that we carried into the basement you know and that thing with nothing in it that thing was like 40 pounds and then top half gave us a little bit of trouble that was heavy but uh, this part I wanted to show you guys the saw blade just got a little bit of the chrome T molding, which is fine. It's under the control panel. But I thought it was interesting that it turned clear after it rubbed away some of the chrome uh, on the top, which was interesting. But yeah, there's the cleat. You can see how it just kind of continues the natural line of the one Extreme Homes put in there. But there it is. Look at that, guys. You can barely see that line. I mean, that turned out amazing. Look, I'm wearing something similar. See? You can't see the line. Can't see the line, can you, Russ? No. <laughs> oh, I'm probably tooting my own horn and my dad's at the same time. A little too much, but I was really proud of that. But here, I uh, started to go back into the reconstruction. I thought I'd show you that a nice bar stool is a good stand-in to uh, put the control panel back on if you only got one man. And there's two screws. One goes down, one goes to the left and uh, holds the control panel down. I've got the uh, mallet in there to hold, the, hold it open. Uh, it's just a quick uh, uh, door open situation and we're gonna zip this thing right in there see no problem and then we got one more that holds it onto the back we'll put that screw in there and here over on the other side show you how to do this one so Obviously, this works in reverse for taking the control panel off. It's just those four screws. Um, you know, personal preference, I might add one or two more. Because uh, the control panel, uh, at least I know on my machine, is a heavy beast. So you can see that how that tightens up a little bit. Um, and get that drill in there. And, yeah, once you get those four screws in there, though, she wasn't, didn't, it felt great. It didn't, it felt secure. It didn't move, but mentally, four screws maybe might not be enough for me. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we put her back down. She's still full of sawdust and uh, from shipping and maybe being uh, a night or two in the garage probably contributed to that. Uh, but yeah, see that stool is perfect. I just added the uh, roll of painters tape underneath to cinch it up and <laughs> wave high on the, the TV Well, hello everybody and welcome to the first mod as we put things back together You'll notice that on my system There's nothing to keep this up and I need to obviously facilitate some Reconnection activities. So first order of business is a uh how would you say maybe an automatic door holding apparatus so new measuring tape be right back got my measuring tape we need roughly something something about 20 inches long. Let's go create something. I found something.
one of the inches. Or so. Power tool. And we make some cuts. Let's see, how are we going to do this in the film? Huh, that'll work. Can you guys still see that? Yep. <laughs> and now let's return to the control panel. <laughs> Squish finger. Maybe we go right underneath that button and right underneath that cleat. Hey, oh, the first mod. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm uh, plugging stuff back in, but I wanted to show you a mod that I was doing before I took this thing apart. So David's pulling right off the power supply on my unit. He's got the power cables coming right out of the box. Molex connector. So he's got a pair for 12 volts and a pair for five. So he had all red connectors on here. So what I did is each pair I labeled with uh, colored electrical tape. So the yellow pair, um, I actually didn't look. Uh, that should be actually be 12 volts based on what I know. And the white pair should be five. And then I labeled the opposite side with the colored tape as well. Uh, where's the other one? There it is. So there, there's white, there's yellow, and there's white, and there's yellow, and then also I labeled the red side, which should be power, red wire, because he's got the same connectors going on. And I did the same with the yellow. There's red tape for the red side on the red pair. Just wanted to show you guys that. If Highly recommend if you're gonna do what I do and mod your machines out, before you take them apart, take lots of pictures. And if you find something like this, label the hell out of it. Well guys, we got her in the basement. I temporarily hooked everything back up and I thought you'd enjoy being along for the ride for hopefully the first power up. Oh, that's a good sign. <laughs> well, let's get some volume. How about a lot of volume. Excuse the uh, mess everywhere. This has uh, been an operation, as I'm sure you know. Always uh, much anticipation after so much heart surgery. Oh, well, that's a good sign. But that's not. Did I not plug that in? I might not have plugged that in. That's going to be upsetting. All right, guys. Sorry about that. A little uh, delay game. One more time with feeling. I actually flipped it so the... Uh, primary monitor in the pre-boot environment is the TV now, so it doesn't show up on the marquee. You know, it's the little details, right? We've got to get those buttons figured out. But uh, just wanted to share with you the initial boot.
I feel like Wolverine right now. <laughs> oh, guys. <laughs> Gets me every time. <laughs> well, now it's time to start mods, but I wanted to just show you guys what we had to do to get this thing down here. We literally sawed it in half. The old saw the girl in half magic show trick. But also, I gotta be about mm, 16 inches away before you guys can even see that line, I'm guessing. Can't see the line, can you, Russ? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we cut it in half very carefully. Carry down the bottom half, carry down the top half, carry down the control panel, screw the glue back together. Let me show you um, this, what we did with this. So this was my father's idea, who's a genius. I get my limited genius from his unlimited genius. He's the wizard, I'm the apprentice, you know. I'm sure most of you have the same similar situation. But um, we actually cut through the MDF on the side panel, but left the brace intact on both sides until we were ready to, um, uh, a excuse me, after we had already installed our new cleats. Uh, so that way the cabinet didn't get out of alignment until we already had structural reinforcement. We did the same thing on the other side. This cleat or this uh, structural reinforcement was left intact. The MDF was cut. We put these in, the, in there, they're, they're glued, epoxied, screwed, and then they have screws going top and bottom. And I probably can't see that because of the wire. Sorry guys, I haven't remanaged these wires because I'm about to do a whole bunch of new stuff. But one screw goes up, one screw goes down, three in the face for the big guy, two in the face for the little guy, a whole bunch of wood glue in the middle. Bob's your uncle. And once we were ready, we made the final cut there and the whole cabinet didn't even move <laughs> because we already had this thing locked down. And that's how we did it. Um, it was nerve wracking as hell. I didn't film it because I figured if I filmed it, I'd make a giant mistake. I'm probably, you know, I'm sure that's way more entertaining, but <laughs> uh, I'm happy to say that we came out on top on this one. 
and I just threw the original computer back in there. You guys will see. I might do a live stream later tonight or tomorrow night, depending on uh, how she goes. I got the parts to take that case and basically make it an external and stand it up in front of that. But now that I'm looking at this, I might need to disassemble this completely, get everything out of the way, because I think I got to paint the bottom floor because you can see the floor through the window. Oh, I could use like a blackout material. Never mind. I, uh, <laughs> ideas just, you know, come to me as we walk through these things together. But yeah, guys, I mean, she came back together. I got her in the basement where I wanted her. She's just so beautiful. I know why, I, I know now why some people just get so darn emotional when they finally get this machine because wow, the waiting, the community, and then finally the presentation just it just gets you right in the feels. So <laughs> I get it. I get it now. I totally get it. And this mark, I mean here, you, you can see now. Marquee is shaming this thing. I gotta I gotta do new color correction on that guy because the tune that I did in the garage isn't cutting it. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I know this video is probably gonna be weird because I'm gonna cut a bunch of like static still shots together, voiceovers and all that stuff. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep this outro, but just wanna say thanks again. I'm gonna keep the videos coming. Like I said, look for a live stream. We're gonna probably tackle that computer. At least build it. I don't know if I'll put it in the cabinet, but we'll build it on the open frame. If you guys are interested in seeing that tonight, maybe we'll do that. A little live stream party, build, PC build party. It feels like high school all over again. Anyway, guys, hit the like button, subscribe. Dislike works too. You know the usual thing. Um, and thanks for uh, watching. Peace.